On Matters Health, the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics at the Ministry of Health has now revealed that the level of obesity has been on the rise. This follows a steady rise from 28% in 2003 to 45% in 2022. And as Elizabeth Atieno reports, this rise has been attributed to poor diet and to poor dietary habits, including overconsumption of junk food. More than 40% of women aged 20 to 49 in Kenya are obese. A 2022 report by the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics in Kenya has revealed that the counties of Kirinyaga, Nyeri, Muranga, Nairobi, Nyandarwa and Kiambu are leading in obesity. This has been attributed to poor dietary habits and the consumption of unhealthy meals. Almost 40 counties, the overweight obesity burden is above 25%, but Kirinyaga takes the lead. The World Health Organization has estimated that by 2035, more than half of the world's population, or 4 billion people, will be obese if significant action is not taken to address the looming crisis. We also cannot forget the burden, increasing burden of obesity, plus its resultant non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and hypertension. Rates of obesity continue to grow among children aged 5 to 19, especially those from low-income countries. The World Health Organization projects that the rate of childhood obesity could more than double to 208 million boys and 175 million girls by 2035. Really, I would say food processing is what Kenya needs, and this is what will drive us to food and nutrition security. According to studies, Kenya is facing a triple burden of malnutrition that is undernutrition, obesity and micronutrient deficiency. But it depicts the country as really burdened by micronutrient deficiencies and uh, mostly looking at vitamin A, iron and iodine. And uh, for your information, at that survey of 2011, hoping things have improved, we had a sink deficiency standing at 70%. Globally, 45% of child deaths are associated with undernutrition. In 2014 alone, Kenya lost a total of 373 billion Kenya shillings due to undernutrition, this being enough proof of the economic impact that malnutrition has on the country's growth and productivity. Over 400 public health officers have been trained and accredited for aflatoxin management. In response to climate change, WFP also supports the adoption of biofortified foods in arid counties, facilitating dietary diversification. This report was revealed by the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics at the Ministry of Health during the third National Food Fortification Summit in Nairobi, where fortification, supplementation and deworming were cited as the key public health measures in curbing malnutrition in the country. So basically we've done so much around that space and we continue uh, looking at how can counties be capacity built, including the public health officers who are now doing a lot more work to heighten surveillance around fortification. Kenya is now celebrating a decade of food fortification. Food fortification is the deliberate practice of adding vitamins and minerals to commonly consumed foods to increase their nutritional value. The foods, drugs and chemical substances act of 2012 requires all sorts of human consumption, packaged maize flour, wheat flour, fats and oils to be fortified with specific vitamins and minerals so as to prevent micronutrient deficiencies. Elizabeth Atieno, TV47.